Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about API versions and how to um, yeah, how to create those. So first of all, let us create a REST controller. Uh, so it's not done. Uh, it's actually not done indexing yet. I created this project by pressing File, New, Projects, Spring Initializer. I'm using SDK 14 right now. I chose Java version 11 as compliance. I chose Gradle. Next, I took ticked off Lombok and I selected web, spring, web like that. Next, next, finish. Then I ended up with this project. And right now we are, I'm importing some libraries. I think it's all done. It's almost done right now. Yes, I would like to enable block animation processing. Thank you very much. And then I want to go to my application, which is right here. <clears throat> and let me just create, uh, create a package. It's my API. So API. And here I'll create a new Java class. Let be a train. Be a data class. This is the one we want to learn. So data class. Yes, yes, yes. Private string. The train should have a type. Type. Model. Yeah, model name. Model name. This. And then we have maybe a max speed or something like that. That could be a float. Max speed. That's so now we have two fields. That's enough for now. And then we want to create a train risk controller like this. This is a risk controller, so let's annotate it with that and add a request mapping. Because I know that this is my API. I know this is the first version, so of course I'm writing version one right here. That is one way to actually handle with the API. And then I create a public, then train. So I'm returning a train. This, and we just return the same train always. New train. And we should also have an all arcs arc constructor. All arc constructor like that, and then we put in a name. Oh, I'm not that good with train models, so I don't know why I actually chose train. But uh, let us call this uh, the choo choo model T1000. I don't know, I don't know any, I don't know the names of uh, the trains, but let us call it that choo choo model T1000, and then um, max speed that could be a 100. This. So that is the train that we are returning. And everything works fine. Let us start up our application. <clears throat> we have a cool API. Oh, I forgot to get, sorry. Get mapping. Let me say train. And then we need to restart the app. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Um, API v1 when I can create a, a curl script while we're waiting actually so let us do that script and new file curl train dot sh curl localhost 80 API v1 train like this the compile for error oh what's going on here Something wrong. It's an all out constructor. Press control request mapping. Should be okay. Build, re rebuild projects. Let's check.
could just change the SDK right here. Ah, uh, okay, I want to, this is the, okay. Uh, it should be okay. That's okay. Okay, I changed the SDK and now it works. It, uh, it actually should also work with the uh, K14. Now I'll check afterwards what actually happened. But now we, our application is started and we'll go to the scripts and we run the file and we get the choo choo train returned like this. Bottle name choo choo, bottle T1000, max speed 100. And then we have this cool API and we are very, very happy about it. We have it for maybe a year or two, maybe just a month. It doesn't matter actually. But then we want to make changes to it. And the rest way, uh, the rest says that uh, we can never change this API. <clears throat> what we can do is that we can actually create a new version. So that means that I can create a version two rest controller. If I want to add a field and I'm creating a, a version two like this, and then I'm also creating a new train because the reason why I want to create a new API is because the train actually got, got a new field. So I could name this train two like this. <clears throat> and then I'll add my the new field that I want to, uh, to have to have and that could be the driver so it has a driver name also <clears throat> right there so now we have two apis one with a version 2 and one with version 1 this is a train 2 that we want to return so it's actually another class that we're returning it's another piece of json that we're returning this is the official and correct way to do this right um so i'll just create a driver that is mike so i am driving the train and then we restart the application and then now we have two apis instead and then, of course, my clients, uh, some clients, they can then run against the first API. They can continue running against it as long as we want to support it. And in theory, we should actually support this forever. If we're really restful, um, then people can just continue using version 1 if that's what we want to. Um, but other people, the new, uh, the new vendors and uh, the new partners that we get, need to, we'll tell them that there are more features in the API version 2. They can get more information from the train. We'll also get the driver in this situation here. And of course, then the, 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 the new partners that we have, the new people that we are uh, operating with, they will create a train two. They will train, create, then they will change that version to version two like this, and then they will run that instead. And then they will also get the driver. <clears throat> so that's how REST works theoretically. But in practice, when adding fields, I have never seen anyone actually creating a new API. People will just say, okay, if I'm adding fields, that should not, that should not make the, uh, the client uh, break any, in any kind. They can just, they can just uh, ignore the extra fields that, uh, that suddenly appears in, in, in the API. So that means that uh, they actually just return, uh, they actually just uh, modify the train and add the field right here instead. And then it would actually say, everything is good when we have to add a new field. Um, but what could give problem is that if let's say that we want to change the max speed, suddenly want to delete a field, that could make the client break, right? Because maybe they're using this uh, max speed to calculate some yeah, average uh, traveling time or something like that, and then suddenly they would not have that field, they will have a null, so they may, it could actually up in a null pointer exception, or maybe a division by zero or something like that. It, it depends on what kind of calculations they're doing. <clears throat> so... Um, so that that would be a problem, and then we would, um, of course, have to create a new version. That is one possibility, and another option is, of course, to talk to the other people that actually use our API. And then, in a big bang, then say this date in next Wednesday or Wednesday in two weeks, we will change it so now that there's no more max speed range any longer. And then everybody sits ready, and then we press the deploy button, and then the <clears throat> then the client, then the, the partners, then they also press the deploy button at the same time. And then, of course, something will break when we do it like that. So that is not that is not the way forward. So that we, a good way forward is actually versioning like this. Another a good way is actually to saying to have a philosophy that when you add, when you add stuff, add new fields, add, add uh, to the model, then it's okay. Then the, none of the clients, the clients should be so robust that they, that they will not break when, when they come when see unknown fields that is that is one way to to, to treat it and, and the other way is, is to version 
And the third way is actually um, to add the version in another way, because right now we just have version one, version two. And what I like about XML actually is that the versioning instead of version two, then we actually use the year like 2020. Then we use the dates like uh, like uh, May and maybe the 2nd of May like this. I'm not sure this is a great, great date, but uh, we could do like that, right? Yeah, that is a quick date. Oh yeah, it is. So then we have the version like that. Then everybody can see, okay, this is the API from this date right here. And we can also make it more explicit, like we're putting in some uh, forward slashes like that. We can actually version with the uh, yeah with with a timestamp instead, and then we then we can change our, our train, move the max speed like that. So then everybody should be happy. Then we write some good documentation, and if we are using hypermedia. Then we would update the uh, hypermedia documentation also, so uh, no one uh, any doubt of what is actually going on. So that is how to version a REST API. Officially, you should make a new version every time. Also, if you're just uh, adding stuff, but uh, of course it's up to you how to make it. Let us just call this uh, this endpoint right here with the XML or with the date version actually that's how they do it in the xml world and the schemas are named with the that the target namespace usually have the date in it that's yes move api yes that's let's see how it looks now and now we only have the, the model name to choose well, T1000 and the driver is Mike. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. That was about versioning and REST API. I hope to see you again very, very soon. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.